Welcome to 60 Skills. We will now discuss what is equilibrium. Elemental equilibrium is a process by which the four elements are banded into specific portions of the body. For the purpose of this exercise, we will be placing fire into the head, air into the throat and upper chest region, water into the abdomen, and earth into the legs. Doing this results in a case of supreme balance of the energies within the body. Performed repeatedly, it gives a practitioner access to the power of the void or akasha. This is important as without access to akasha, the amount of an element a practitioner can bring forth is largely limited by environmental conditions. Once a practitioner has reliable access to akasha, they are capable of bringing largely unlimited amounts of the elements into their body in the immediate area around them, contingent upon their ability to move energy, which is another topic. The main purpose for doing this is the establishment of equilibrium, as was mentioned, generates a kind of balance within the body. This generates also a kind of poise and focus that is unique. At very deep levels, this is sometimes referred to as equanimity. The establishment of this state allows a practitioner access to both akasha, but by virtue of having access to akasha, non-dual light as well. Non-dual light being the light of supreme consciousness, complete mind, or God as some people would refer to it. Now what happens when you gain access to this is a bit unclear. As non-dual light in and of itself cannot be constrained by time or space. The result of which is describing what happens there when you encounter this is somewhat difficult. And it has been a question that has vexed the sages for millennia. I certainly have nothing to add to that argument, other than to say that whatever happens there is supremely important. Access to non-dual light, by extension, gives you complete freedom. Freedom over reincarnation, freedom over your activity in this world. While you are still bound by the constraints of karma, and obviously you will benefit or pay for any behavior you engage in, you now have a complete choice over this. Likewise, accessing Akasha allows you to act as a creator, because it is out of Akasha that the one and the zero, the light and the dark, the electric and magnetic, and by virtue of the elements, and everything that comes from them is created. So, simply put, there are a lot of reasons why you want to be able to establish equilibrium. It is, in fact, one of about half a dozen primary power develop development methods I have encountered in metaphysics in over a 30-year search. It is by far the most friendly and the most easiest on the body. Additionally, it brings a variety of benefits with it as well, and we will discuss those in a moment. But the purpose of establishment of equilibrium is to engender or develop this supreme kind of balance of the elements in the body. So keep in mind, if you really want to work magic, you need to be able to engage in the establishment of equilibrium. And doing this via the elements is the easiest way possible. Let us begin. Welcome to 60 Skills. I will now discuss the requirements to perform the establishment of equilibrium. To perform this exercise, you need to be able to pour breathe or engage in vital breathing. You additionally need to be able to generate the four elements. So if you do not know how to do this, I would highly encourage you to explore my course on the four elements. While there will be a brief review of these techniques within this course, you really should be able to do these things before attempting to establish equilibrium proper. In point of fact, it is best if you have performed approximately 10 hours of work with each one of the primary elements, fire, air, water, and earth, as described in the 60 skills system. Otherwise, all you need is a quiet place to practice. Let us begin. Welcome to 60 skills. We will now discuss the establishment of equilibrium as a gateway to 
non-dual light in Akasha. As was mentioned pre previously, the establishment of equilibrium via the elements repeatedly will result in your ability to access Akasha and non-dual light. The fact of the matter is, most people can do this, but their ability to do it is very limited and usually only occurs in moments of great duress or simply by accident. Learning how to establish equilibrium repeatedly and quickly gives you a consistent access to these states, first Akasha and then later on non-dual light. The establishment of equilibrium is not the only way to do this, however, it is one of the most reliable ways to do it and certainly one of the most easy on the body. Now, why do you want access to Akasha and non-dual light? As has already been mentioned previously in this course, anything visualized strongly enough on the astral and given enough energy over enough time, assuming it is in fact physically possible, will manifest in the physical. That said, your ability to access the energy to make that happen at a high pitch or to a high degree is largely limited if you do not have access to Akasha. Additionally, access to Akasha cements your position as a creator in the spiritual worlds. This is important because the fact of the matter is, without Akasha, when you engage with spirit beings, you are largely engaging in a battle of will. With Akasha, you have the ability to dissolve the subtle body that allows them access to this world. As a result, they tend to respect you quite a bit more. And since these are creatures that do not have physical bodies, and therefore do not have breath, their ability to operate and to influence you exists 24 hours a day. So if you are approaching your interaction with them from a battle of will perspective, that's a battle that you will eventually lose. However, if you approach that relationship from a perspective of Akasha and its possession, this is a battle that you will not lose. As a result, spirits tend to engage with you on a much more equitable basis. All right, that's spirit magic, and that's a good enough reason to have Akasha. Why else would I want Akasha? Well, as one of the five primary levels of reality, the most refined being non-dual light, next Akasha, next mental, next astral, next vital or physical material, Akasha is the stepping stone to non-dual light. Non-dual light is that state of supreme enlightenment that people talk about. So by accessing Akasha, you are getting one step closer to accessing non-dual light. And here's the thing about magic. Enlightenment and the enlightenment path benefit you over a very long period of time, multiple lifetimes. But every time you learn magic, you have to go through the steps all over again in every lifetime to learn how to utilize that. So by spending at least a little bit of your time pursuing enlightenment, or for those of you who do not like that term, the state of non-dual light, this guarantees that you will have access to magic again in the future. So this is simply something to think about. So as I've described, establishment of equilibrium improves your access to Akasha and by virtue of that to non-dual light. Access to Akasha in, in return also gives you power within the spirit world and gives you a focal point from which you can pull all of the other elements. This will make your magic much more effective. Now, there is one issue that needs to be discussed involving Akasha. Akasha exists in an odd opposition to vital energy. So accessing Akasha is quite expensive on your vital force. For this reason, you need to have a strong, healthy body if you intend to work with a lot of physical or near astral magic. Likewise, the more vital force you have, the longer you can access Akasha for. So these two things exist in a kind of balance. You can't have one without the other, and a lack of one generally results in a lack of another. Now, how much Akasha you need and how much vital force you need will have a lot to do with the kinds of practices you choose to engage in. 
if you are largely involved in out-of-body projection, you don't need that much. On the other hand, if you want to engage in evocation or the summoning and binding of entities, you're going to need a lot. If you want to engage in the physical manifestation of the elements, you're going to need substantially more. So again, keep in mind your development of these things is also closely tied to your goal. So I would encourage you to apply some thought to this. Finally, while the pursuit of enlightenment or non-dual light is certainly not mandatory, if for no other reason you should make the effort to pursue this in order to guarantee your continued access to magic in future lives. Again, all things to think about. Let us begin. Welcome to 60 Skills. We will now discuss establishment of equilibrium and power building in Franz Barden's initiation into Hermetics. As was mentioned earlier, the establishment of equilibrium is the primary power building method within Franz Barden's initiation into Hermetics. There are other ways to do this. Other ways of generating power, metaphysically speaking, are the microcosmic, macrocosmic orbits, heart center awakening, as is described in many Buddhist systems, kundalini awakening, as described in many Hindu yogic systems, and finally, the samahati exercises, which are described in things like Raja Yoga. Now, by power building, what this means specifically is granting a practitioner or giving a practitioner the ability to generate akasha. The reason for this is quite simple. As was mentioned earlier in the course, out of akasha, you can pull all of the other elements and all of the other energies. This, in turn, allows you to act as a creative being and cements your position within the metaphysical world. This is the reason why things like the going through the Kundalini in many systems are considered so vitally important to a practitioner's development. And in many ways, if you have not done this, you are not considered a complete or adult practitioner. Things like the Samahati or single point of focus exercises also allow you to generate a little bit of akasha by basically boring a hole through reality. The fact of the matter is, if you need metaphysical power to accomplish something, either in the physical world or the more subtle worlds, you need access to akasha to do that. And as I've stated previously in this course, establishment of the equilibrium via the elements is one of the easiest ways to do this. So understand, this is not about pursuit of power for power's sake. The simple fact of the matter is, no matter what you want to do in life, you need at least a little bit of this. If you are only concerned with the enlightenment path, you don't need much. If you are concerned with physical manifestation, you need the most. So, as has been mentioned in this course before, remember, you need some source of metaphysical power to pursue your metaphysical goals. Ignoring this generally, generally results in people with a great deal of sensitivity and very little ability. And this lack of ability tends to result in a lot of the delusion you see in these circles. The simple fact of the matter is the Enlightenment path really doesn't take much more than a year or two. A few hours a day is more than sufficient to accomplish this. Assuming you have a power source to run that off of. Additionally, the body has to be prepared to handle that energy. And this is what the body training exercise is about. If you don't have access to those and you don't have access to a power source, getting to your end goal of enlightenment is going to be exceedingly difficult, take a very long time, and largely just have to do with karma and fate. The simple fact of the matter is the success or conversion rate for people using this methodology is very low. On the other hand, every student I have had has had an encounter with non-dual light within six months to a year of practice. And all of them used the method of the establishment of equilibrium via the elements. So even if you're not interested in physical magic, enlightenment is most easily achieved by mastering this technique. So again, this is merely something to think about. Now, if you're interested in more physical forms of magic, this is the best way I have seen yet in 30 years of looking to do that. Let us begin. Welcome to 60 Skills. We will now discuss practice design in terms 
of the establishment of equilibrium. As was mentioned earlier in this course, you must be able to engage at a minimum in floor breathing. Additionally, you need to have a good 10 hours of practice in with elemental fire, elemental air, elemental water, and elemental earth. The reason for this is very simple. If you have less than 10 hours total time with each one of those elements, typically your ability to generate the energy clearly utilizing three-part concentration or the elements as Kabbalah, utilizing a sound, color, and sensation, is generally going to be very weak and rather haphazard. The result of which is you simply will not be able to generate equilibrium reliably. So if you have not already acquired 10 hours of seated practice utilizing the elements, I would strongly advise you to do so now. Doing this and using standing or walking can accelerate that a little bit, but 10 hours and 20 hours being better are generally considered the minimum. Once you can do that, you can now begin to practice equilibrium. There are a few things you need to know about this. When you truly generate equilibrium, the first time, most people go to sleep. So when you practice this, you want to be in a stable seated position where if you temporarily lose consciousness, you're not going to hurt yourself. So an old sofa chair, this chair might be a little risky, for example, definitely not a stool but a very comfortable, stable place where if you decide to take a nap spontaneously, there's no risk of hitting your head and getting hurt. I mentioned this as the first time I achieved equilibrium. I did it using a ritual method. Upon getting it to work for the first time, I woke up on the ground. Luckily, I wasn't injured, but that might not have been the case with a little less luck. I have consistently seen most of my students take a nap the first time I teach them this technique. The reason for this varies, but my suspicion is in most people, there is a long-term elemental imbalance. This imbalance, the first time you achieve equilibrium, suddenly gets fixed for a brief moment. The issue with this is simply that your body finds this very confusing. It's used to operating a certain way, and now it is not doesn't know what to do. So its natural response, assuming you're not be, you know, being threatened at the time, is to hit the reset button. And when that happens, you take a nap. This also happens, interestingly enough, if someone has been in long-term pain and all of a sudden the pain suddenly ends. Again, the body gets confused, the person goes unconscious. It's a very curious thing. However, the point I'm trying to get at is when you begin to practice this, make sure you're in a, so a soft, stable, stable place where there's no risk of injury. Next. When we perform this exercise initially, you will be engaging in nine breaths of each element or more into each one of these bands within the body. This is going to take quite a while. You want to use roughly the same number of breaths per element in each band the head, the throat and upper chest, the abdomen, and the legs. However, over time, you want to be able to generate the state of equilibrium off of a single breath by just banging it into each one of the bands. This makes the achievement of equilibrium useful, particularly on the fly. For those of you who know how to do so, you can even link this to a ritual. That would allow you to trigger equilibrium upon demand. Now again, you don't need to be able to do that, but for doing certain things in the real world, it makes things much easier. This is something to think about. But the bottom line is, with practice, you should be able to generate equilibrium off of a single breath to the fire band, the air band, the water band, and the earth band within the body. Okay, next. You're going to want to practice this exercise a lot, and by a lot, I mean several times a day, preferably at least twice, but honestly, more than that. And the reason is very simple. You are going to want to repeatedly establish equilibrium over and over again over a period of weeks and months. At a certain point when you're doing this, if your eyes are closed, you're going to see a dark purple color start to creep into your vision somewhere. That's Akasha. 
and this is important. Development of Akasha is essentially your pass into the enlightened world. Without it, you can't get there, and it doesn't matter whose system you're dealing with. I've studied all of them, and I'm here to tell you this is just how it works. Now, how much of that you need largely depends upon your goals, but that is one of the primary goals of the establishment of equilibrium. So when you practice this technique, you're going to want to practice it several times per day. As a practical matter, you need to be able to generate each band of the element off of a single breath. Otherwise, this is going to take too much time and you're not going to succeed. After a period of weeks or months, you will start to see that dark purple color creep into your meditation. That's the Akasha. When you can do that, I would strongly recommend you look at the coursework in 60 skills involving the use of Akasha and non-dual light. This, so to speak, is where the rubber really hits the road in meditative practice. This is where the magic truly happens. So again, to sum up, the first time you practice this, you want to practice the establishment of equilibrium in a place where if you happen to fall over, you're not going to get hurt. So a big comfy, lounger or couch works pretty well. Second, you need to get to the point where you can establish equilibrium utilizing one breath of element per elemental band. And you're going to want to do this repeatedly throughout the day over a period of weeks to months until you can generate a kasha, which in your mind's eye will appear as a dark purple color energy. For those of you with clairvoyance, you may even see it around you. Let us begin. Welcome to 60 Skills. We will now practice the establishment of fire into the head. As is the case with all elemental practices in the 60 skill system, we will be utilizing three-point concentration. That is again the SCH sound or the sound of a kettle steaming, a bright red color, and the sensation of heat. You will want to generate approximately nine breaths in the headband, reaching from the bottom of the chin to the top of the head, focusing on the pineal gland and expanding outward. When finished, you will want to ventilate the head utilizing vital breath until all sensations, colors, and sounds have left the body. Let us begin. Assume a stable seated position, pull from the top of the head, tongue on the roof of the mouth or behind the two front teeth feet and legs together. If you know how to establish an electric body position, do so now. Pour breathe into the head, a bright red, warm color making a shh sound. Breathe out of the head. Breathe into the head. Breathe out of the head. Breathe into the head. Breathe out of the head. Now breathe the energy into the head, filling the head. And exhale nothing. And inhale into the head. And exhale nothing. Do this on your own several times. Hear the shh sound internally. See the bright red color. Feel the sensation of heat. Do this on your own for several breaths. Again, you are containing this between the space at the top of the head to the bottom of the chin. And in here. Do this a few more times. Hold it there for a moment. Feel that heat in your mind's eyes. See the red color. 
in your ear, in your inner ear, hear that shh sound. But again, just in the head, nowhere else in the body. All right, that is the elemental banding of fire into the head. Now I want you to vital breathe and clear that sensation out. Clear the color, clear the sound, clear the heat, clear everything from the head and make sure it's completely gone. Or breathe in and out of the head. This may take several moments. An additional te technique from yoga you can utilize is you can inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth and stick the tongue out going ha, such as this. Even though it may look ridiculous, it is also very effective if you do this while walking. Again, you want all sensations of heat, any colors such as red that you're seeing in your eyes, or any sounds you hear in your internal ear to be gone when you're finished practicing this. Let us begin. <laughs> 